Hi everyone, it's Farron here. Update on the bench, um, excluding the 410 build. Um, this is an update on all my uh, armor kits that I've got on the bench so far. Uh, first off, uh, I'm going to show you the, um, the Tiger 1, the initial production that I was working on. And um, here it be. I can, this is the best view I can actually do, guys, because I only have a webcam. But I'll do the best I can. Um, basically, what I've done here, I um, after priming, I've primed this all in black. Uh, I'm only halfway through it, um, and then over that, um, I went over with a very dark um, grey, which is a Schwartz grey. It's one of the um, life colour modulation colours, but it's, I thought I'd use that as a base, and it pretty much looked like black. So uh, I went over it with uh, XF63 in the end, and then after that I went um, used the hairspray method, hairsprayed all over it, and then um, after that I went over it with um, not a pure white though, but this one here. This is called a uh, German tank crew, white German tank crew, and it's basically it's off white, and it worked very very well. Um, as a whitewash, so but I want this to be absolutely heavily weathered, heavily chipped. The um, whitewash is almost completely off, and that's how I want it to look. I've actually now sealed all of it in a semi gloss varnish, and uh, it's a nice finish on it. Um, on the metallic areas, I'll say it's all metallic in it really, but on here I've uh, rubbed over with graphite. It's not really picking it up, but um, I've got a little German helmet on one of the lines there. I just like that. Um, and yeah, there's the wheels and everything. And put, these are just primed in Trax Primer at the moment before I do anything else. Same with the uh, track on the top. As a kit, yeah, it goes together extremely well. But one mistake on the actual um, instructions is is this front glacier plate here where the driver and, sh and the uh, machine gun and radio operator is. Um, they tell you to put this in after that, but the way it's constructed, it, this needs to go in first and then this plate goes in after. If you do it the other way, you'll, you'll find yourself ripping this off in order to get that in. Because if you don't, you're going to have a huge thick lip going across here. You don't want that. So that's that. Um, there were a couple of foot parts I kept off, which were the power lines to these lamps. And I just couldn't get them to sit properly, so I thought, sod it, I can't can't be asked with this it's too fiddly my fingers are too bloody big um, the wires that came with a kit absolutely hate them uh, for some reason they, they they're using like a stainless steel or, or steel rather than copper copper is more manageable I can see what Adam man's on about now yeah I bloody sympathize because it is a real pain in the ass to manipulate you have to sort of like super glue it down clamp it give it five minutes and you're just repeating that process over and over and over and it's just so bloody tedious I mean at the end I know there's a lot of rivet counters out there who like to use proper metal um, uh, towing ropes um, personally myself I'll be happy with the molded plastic ones <laughs> I really don't give a crap I mean at the end of the day it's just there for display it's a model it's a toy it goes into a bloody um, cabinet and that's it nine times out of ten we're never gonna look at it again but anyway on the back here, you see I've got some of the rust work done on the uh, back of the tank here. Uh, I haven't finished any of that, I want to darken this up a bit. Uh, MIG pigments are used to that, and uh, MIG pigment, uh, well, pigment fixer. And yeah, that's pretty much it on that. But I mean, as a kit on a whole for assembly, eight. An 8 out of a 10 I would say because uh, it's not perfect because of the wires the mistake on the uh, front plate there on the instructions and so on but um, a lot more painting to do on the back I've got to, like paint the wooden block etc and then uh, got to wear, wear off I've got to paint all the little latches on here properly and that's that um, the next one I've been working on is a uh, half track all the parts are in the box so I'm not gonna take everything out I'll just show which model I'm doing it's another dragon kit and it's um, that one there SD KFZ 250 stroke one 
Okay, nav or now, whatever, plus bonus figures. The figures are absolutely exquisite. Um, I'm looking to do this variant here. That looks rather simple, simplistic. Um, I built this kit within three days because there just ain't much to it. And I'll see all once you build all the sub assemblies, it's just putting it all together. I'll show you what I've done. So this is what we've done. Is okay. I've still got to um, go over this with some oil paint to pale out this um, XF60. Um, the leather I've done with um, what, do I, what color do I use? I use? Oh yeah, Panzer Aces leather, and then went over it with uh, burnt um, yeah burnt sienna oil paints. Just give a little bit of uh, variation in the color of the worn areas of the seat. Um, yeah, that's primed on the sides there. That's ready for his final coat of paint. And then on here, I've just got to put some graphite on here for the uh, rifle parts. And I've got to, I haven't finished these by far, I've got, to, I've got to put a second coat on those yet. But um, that's how it stands at the moment. Um, got the radio equipment there and the speedometer and the rev counter, etc. And then we've got the sidewalls. Okay, I've just got to put some matte varnish over that those bits there. Fits pretty good actually. It's not a bad model. I mean I paid $29.99 for it. Which I thought it was, was alright actually I thought. I mean there's uh, from Fenders. The others. These are two of the figures that came with the kit. I had a lot of fun painting those and they got a really complex camouflage skin. It looks like it's um, chocolate brown and then it's got the different dots colours like the ochre, the pale brown and the green. Uh, and then you got this guy here. Which of these are all good. I mean he'll be holding a map. There's a map printed on the instructions which I got cut out and put on there for him to hold. So uh, it's basically asking for directions I think or planning their next attack on whoever. But um, these go together extremely well. Lots of details, lots of accessories. Um, Got to put a bit of filler in the back there of that one there, it's a bit of a nasty gap. But generally, dragon figures go together really well, and, uh, and the poses are brilliant. you got nice, um, what you call it, I don't know, they just look good. I like them, um, the details are good, they go together well, I think they do anyway. Uh, I don't have a problem painting them, I have a lot of fun actually. That's that one. Um, just got a couple more bits to show you. Bum, bum. It's one of the Falsham Jaeger I've actually completed. I've got a cigarette. I've just got to put a little orange tip on his cigarette. And I've got uh, details on his gun. But um, and there's all the leather work. I opted for like a brown leather strap rather than black because uh, that's. I find brown easier to highlight than black. That's just personal taste, and the trousers are um, all highlighted with oils. Yeah, so very nice figures uh, to paint again. Another dragon set. Okay, and I've got um, three more of those up here, which are uh, on the WP WIP. Uh, bench, uh, shelf rather, and then we got another one which is almost completed there. He's got all of these uh, hanging down this bandolier, what you call a bandolier, I don't know. But all the ammo he holds, uh, basically I went over that with just black and then dry brushed it with a subsequent layers of different shades of grey. Can't really see it on there. But it's there. You know, and again, all I've got to do is basically is the highlights of everything and just continue all the strap work. So like on that one there, he's um, actually, um, that's meant to be a match in his, in his hand there. He's off this other guy. And light on his cigarette, that one there. So uh, yeah, nice. And the hands are great for gripping the, the weapons because they're not like staying, staying open there and then so it's not looking like that on the model, if you know what I mean. It's actually gripping 
the actual rifle, which I thought was, was good. Some thought went into that. And, blah, well, not last. Now we've got, then I've got these guys. These are the 352nd uh, Vox Grenadier in our dens. And um, this figure set was so hard to come by when I was after it. I mean, I literally, I waited months to find one on eBay. And when I did, I just got it. And I was lucky enough to get it for, I think it's like, I think I paid $12.99 for it or $14.99. Uh, it's from Japan, but I'm just glad I got it. Started painting these already, like, um, this is like Ger German uniform. Yes, that one there, which is called German Uniform. 70920. And added a little extra black into that to darken it. So when I put my highlights on, I got a dark base to work on. But uh, the poses on these are brilliant. Um, let's go through these one at a time. I've got this, this fella here. He's got a Panzerfaust over his shoulder, and then he's holding his, his machine gun down there. And then on the back, he's got all his equipment, like his extra ammunition pouches, water can, mess tin, shovel, satchel, um, stick grenades in the front there. I don't think you can actually see that, but... And the, and the primer I used on this is a MIG Black Primer. I mean, I'm, I'm in no way sponsored by MIG ammo or anything like that, but I just find that their primer is really good, far superior to the um, Vallejo one I used to use. Uh, there's another guy, he's going to have a rifle coming across there, which is that one there. And again, um, let's get this in closer. Oh, I don't know where all the shadows come from, the sun's been blazing all day. There we go. But so yeah, nice poses again. I mean, I like to put all the equipment on. I find it better for painting. That's just me on a personal way of painting. And that's that one. And yeah, he's got a full raincoat on. All his equipment. Really nice uh, models these are. And the last one came with it. I mean, uh, this figure here. I mean, he'll be holding this machine gun. But that's the base colour for the camouflage. I think it's, it's the war, it's the war slide, or watermark camouflage that's going on here. And then all his equipment stuck on. Went together extremely well. The entire set went really well. I, I thought so anyway. Um, the only thing that takes a long time with these is actually uh, taking all the mould lines off. I mean, when I build a model, that's the first thing I've got to do. I've got to remove all the mold lines, it will just wind me up big time. It's just an OCD of mine, I guess. But Dragon actually do um, a 116 version of this figure as well. I've got that in my cupboard somewhere in many pieces, where I slung it against the wall out of frustration. But um, it can be, I can put them back together again at some point. Okay, that's that. And the last, this is, this is the last one. Pretty sure it is. Uh, what I've been working on is this uh, Tamiya kit, this Panzer 4H. Um, I've actually um, put my own Zimmerit on it because um, there was, uh, when I was building this kit, <laughs> it mentioned in the instructions that, you know, oh, bugger. Um, never mind. Would um, this kit actually has to be Zimmerit, Zimmerit coated? Sorry for going out of shot, that's just, sorry. So, um, I started it myself last night. There you go, so I've got on the sides there. So basically I'm working around the shovel at the moment and getting down in these areas here where I've glued everything down. You know, it's quite tricky, but um, I'll get in there. So, there's that bit there. I've left um, little chips on purpose and large segments missing. I'm going to put a few patchy bits around here to make it look like it's, you know, just worn off through um, through battle. And as a, as a kit, it just flies together. It's beautiful. Um, this is a bit I like the rest is up there. So again, I left it all patchy, you know, through wear, you know, bits of um, you know bullet ricochets, chipped some of it off, and what have you. 
Um, this took me a good part of, whoa, I don't know, about two and a half hours, I guess. And all I'm using is um, green stuff. Um, I'll be continuing afterwards uh, doing that side there. And about two and a half hours that took me last night, but it's really enjoyable anyway. I'll, uh, all I've got to do is basically the blank sides I've shown you. And, uh, and that's it. And um, quite a long side, but quite a long um, video today. But uh, I wanted to get another video on what I'm doing, so you can see my progress and everything. And um, everything you've seen so far is going to go into a diorama. Yes, I'm going to basically push myself to do a diorama. So I want to buy myself some um, some of that foam board stuff, the thick stuff like that, and. Um, and I'm going to get some dust clay and then when I get paid I want to get a load of scenic stuff to actually start making a diorama base so I was just thinking just doing a, a muddy road running through the Ardennes or something like that uh, just like a convoy or something you know something happening before the Allies got there or you know just reinforcements it's not going to be historically correct okay I can't do historically correct okay so it'll be historically incorrect <laughs> okay so yeah that's that okay guys thanks for watching remember to hit the like button and subscribe thanks very much bye for now